Let's open it up. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for blessing us and saving us and loving us. And Lord, we thank you for your presence this day. We thank you for this message that we're about to experience. And we thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon those who are here and those who are there. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, and Savior, let your word be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Now, bless God. Today, we're a little educational today. Um, <clears throat> I always like to preach with an open Bible, if I don't directly refer to it. It's nice to have it here. Okay. Today's, the title of today's message is, Our Soul and Our Spirit Wrestle for Supremacy <coughs> Within Us. Our Soul and Our Spirit Wrestle for Supremacy Within Us. That's two minds struggling one against another. That's inside of both of us, our soul and our spirit. And so, we each have a soul, which is our Greek mind, will, and emotions. It's how we think. It's our natural will. <coughs> okay. Our soul equals our natural man. And the Bible clearly says, that Satan is the god of this world. Okay. Now, if that's, if if uh, Satan is god of this world, that's whose thoughts we're thinking. That's what we got, natural man. And then we have a spirit inside of us. Which is our uh, spiritual man. Examine both those today. Oh, that sounds kind of crazy. It's like schizophrenic. Two personalities. That's the truth, however. Two personalities. You see, your soul, your mind, your emotions are your natural man. That's how we think. That's how we think before we get born again. That's how everybody here thought. If you're not born again yet, well, then that's too bad for you. But if you are, why? You've experienced this is the natural man. We still think like that. But then we got, then we got saved. We got born again. By the Spirit of God, well, God is a, the Bible says that God is a spirit. It's a spirit, it's God's spirit who, who saved us, okay? So that, then we become, we got the spiritual man thoughts. So we got natural man thoughts. Which we still have, okay? Although, what's <coughs> up? We've got spiritual man thoughts. Which we got when we got saved and born again. We got both those kinds of thoughts. Where did they come from? One of them is Satan. Who's the God of this world? Yes. And the other one is God. So we've got, if you're saved and born again, you have two kinds of thoughts going in your head. That's why, like for example, before you got saved, maybe uh, you'd walk into a store someplace and see some that you liked, and so there was no one looking, you go ahead and pick it up and take it and walk out with it, okay? That's your natural man, okay? That's your natural thing to do. However, once you got saved, you walk in the same store, and you say, oh, I, I like that, I still got that thought, but now I've got God's thought in my head saying that's wrong. So then you, you look, oh, well, I don't know if I want to do that or not, and you start feeling guilty. If you do that, you know what? That's guilty. The only reason you're feeling guilty is because you got God's thoughts telling you that you're guilty. Okay, now that's kind of the basic thing. What we're going to look at today are two, uh, two ways of thinking. I open up with uh, 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 a, a title here: uh, Character Traits of Our Soul and of Our Spirit. Our, uh, our soul and our spirit that we each have, if we're born again, we got both. Our, our um, uh, character traits. That's, that's in Genesis chapter 25. Verses 23 through 27. Now read this. And the Lord God said unto her, and he said unto Rebecca, Isaac's wife, and the Lord God said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Oh, see, there's that too, starting right up. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people, two different kinds of people. That's us, for so, okay. So I read that again. And the Lord said unto Rebecca, 
of two nations are in thy womb, and two men of the people shall be separated from thy bowels. And shall give birth to two different kinds of people. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. So these two birth children, one of them is stronger than the other. And that specifies which is which. It says here, the elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the which means the firstborn is the elder, and in the end, the elder will serve the younger. The younger is the second form, okay? Now we continue now. And when her days, that's the days of her pregnancy to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the Hebrew twins means duplicates, okay, in, in her womb. And the first came out, the first, well, that's the elder, came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And Esau, I have a little commentary here, the, the, that's the elder, beautifully, that's the soul. That's what came first. Before you got saved and born again, you were strictly soul. That's what, that's what came first, okay? And then secondly came spirit into your, into your mind. When you got saved and born again, the spirit came into your mind. Now let's look how that happens out here. And, and uh, uh, they called his name the first one. He came out red like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. That's the elder, that's the soul, that's your natural man. That came out first, okay? And after that came out his brother, and his hand, the brother's hand took hold on Esau's heel. So the, the brother came out second, and he took hold of Esau's heel. That's good. And you'll see to transplant him if you could. Anyway, and his name is called Jacob. Jacob, now Jacob is the younger. He's the younger. Typically, he's the spirit. He's the spiritual man, but he wasn't at that time a spiritual man. He was became a spiritual man eventually. You gotta get saved first to become a spiritual man. Okay. So what we're looking at here is at, at who's the who's the elder? And the, the Bible says, and this is a prophecy now. Let's look at our first footnote on that one. That was number one prophecy, Romans uh, 9:12. And it was said unto her, that's the elder, the soul shall serve the younger, the soul shall serve the spirit. So the one that came out first is going to serve the one who came out second. The one that came out first is Esau, your natural man, and your second that came out is Jacob, the spiritual man. He's spiritually the spiritual man, okay? Well, that sounds kind of strange. Okay. But that's exactly what happened to you and me. And Isaac was three score and sixty years old when he bared them, and the boys grew, and here it is now, the characteristics. And Esau was a cunning hunter, oh, of the field, a man of the field. I'll read it all. And Esau was a cunning hunter of the field, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Let's go back and look at that verse, because that's the actual characteristics. And Esau, that's the one that came out first, your natural man was a cunning hunter, and cunning in the Hebrew means skillful. So let's look at our second footnote, what cunning means in the Greek, or, or no, not Greek, but in the, in the dictionary. Of course, it, it means skillful in the Greek. I look at the dictionary, our second footnote says, that the first was skillful or, or clever. That's, we're talking now about Esau, our natural man, skillful or pleasure, and we certainly were, weren't we? In fact, we still are to some degree. And the second definition is skillful in deception, sly and crafty. And that's exactly how we get away with things as a natural man, sly and crafty. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Now, what does a hunter do? A hunter kills his prey. That's what a hunter does. He goes out and kills his prey. Now, he may kill it for food, or he may just kill it for fun, or for whatever other reason, but a hunter kills his prey. I was a hunter at one time, when I was younger, I was a, I was a hunter, and I stopped doing it because I felt, I, was, I came to a moment when I was a deer, deer hunting in the woods, and across the valley there was a herd of deer about, I, I would say, almost a quarter mile away. I was in New York State, this was winter time, and I had red shotguns, to use had shotguns, <laughs> pretty, pretty tough to shoot something to say. 
put him out away with a shotgun. There's a shotgun. They, they, they go sniper which way. It's a slug. They don't know which way. Anyway, so I, being a kid, I think I was about 17 at the time, started to shoot at the at the at the uh, at the herd a quarter mile away. There was no way I was ever going to get to get to that in, in reality. And then I realized what I was doing. And after that, well, I, there was another instance I had where I killed a little squirrel. I was out in the woods. A second instance where I felt really stupid. I was I was out in the, this in the summertime. I was in the woods, and I, and, and I, I sat down against a tree, and there was another tree, maybe ten feet away from me. Okay, and a little chipmunk, a chipmunk, this big, a little bitty chipmunk. I saw, and I'm sitting there with my shotgun, with bird seed in it. Now it was now. Okay, um, the chipmunk came running down the running down the trunk. <coughs> And he stopped there in the middle of the trunk about this, this high. And I took my shot, and I shot the thing. Now, bird sheen, it means the, the little pellets went every which way. But that thing, and he just froze. And I thought, I thought I might have missed him because he just froze. But then I, when I got up to go over uh, uh, 10 feet away, I can't miss that. I go, and he was, wasn't froze. He was attached to the tree. My pellets, the, the BBs in my, in my shell had gone through him, someone had, had attacked him to the tree. That's when I quit. That's when I quit killing things. I quit being a hunter. Um, but that was a couple of stories. Let's go back to what, the, the thing here. We're talking about Esau now, a natural man, was skillful. He was a hunter, and a hunter kills his prey. Just think about that. We've got this one equation, a hunter kills his prey. A man in the field, and in the Hebrew field means wild, so he, he stayed out in the wild a lot. And then the verse goes on, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents, which means Jacob was civilized. But Esau was wild. And that's how I used to be, wild. Even though I quit hunting, I was still <coughs> wild. I had no control over me at all. I was just, I was my own boss. I had no authority. On top of that. So, with that background, that's what I wanted to do because what we're looking at now is the soul, which was Esau in the spirit, which was not immediately, but which became uh, Jacob, or, no, it was Jacob originally. But you know, something funny happened in the Bible. Jacob became something else. Jacob became Israel. We'll get to that. Jacob became something different. Jacob got born again. And he became something different. But now we have Esau and Jacob. And I have here. Well, I'm not going to get any other things. So now, let me get to the, the, the bulk of what I wanted to, to speak to you about. Our soul wrestles with our spirit. That's the title. Our soul wrestles with our spirit. Where is our soul? Inside of us. He's our thoughts. Wrestles with our spirit. Where's our spirit? Inside of us. He's our thoughts. If you feel guilty about something, <laughs> that's 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 the, the, the spiritual man talking inside you. Okay, whenever you're, you're about to do something, whether you do it or not, you feel guilty about it. That means you got to. If you don't feel guilty, I didn't think so. I didn't feel guilty about anything. I was my own me. I was a natural man. I did what I wanted to do. Okay. So now we read these verses as they are in the text. Uh, before I go on and explain them, this is Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 through 20. 28. Genesis 32, 24 through 28. I did this for the uh, internet people. And Jacob, this is a, going into a whole different time now. This is when Jacob is in fear for his life. He's had some problems with Esau, his brother. He thinks Esau <coughs> doesn't like him at all and is about to come down with an army and perhaps kill him. He's not sure, but he's got some troubles, okay? And so Jacob is a mature man at this time. So let's read this now, Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him 
until the breaking of the day. This is, I'll read it out. And Jacob was left alone in their wrestling like man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. So it's hard to follow because we don't know who's doing the talking unless you think about it. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me, because he's wrestling with, with this other man. And he said, the other man said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And the other man said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Now this is a very, how do I say, famous, <coughs> for Christians, famous passage, which nobody knows too much about. What comes right down to it, okay? Because you have to, you have to insert here who's doing the talking, so forth and so on. So now we're going to look at the explanation for that particular passage. I start off again with Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. I'm going to continue. And Jacob, now, what's Jacob's name mean in Hebrew? It means heel catcher, supplanter. Oh, that's this guy. That's this guy here before he got saved. That's Jacob. And his name means in Hebrew, heel catcher, supplanter. And in the Amplified Bible has it, he's a schemer, a trickster, a swindler. Now, and all out, thief and crook, that's pretty much how all the natural men are, okay? Now the first footnote on, on, on supplanter, and Jacob is, is a huge interest supplanter. First footnote, number one is, uh, on supplant is dictionary, supplant, supplanter, supplant means to take the place of, supersede, especially through force or plotting, especially through force or plotting. The second uh, definition is to remove or uproot in order to replace with something else. That's the natural man acting, okay? So we have here, and Jacob um, was left alone. He's all by himself now. This is nighttime. He's all by himself in his tent. And they wrestled, uh, and they wrestled a man with him. Well, what does wrestle mean in the, in the, in the <coughs> If we look at it, that second footnote, wrestle means it's a D A Q. Let me just put this here. Not to, but it makes a big difference. It means A B A Q, and, and the definition is probably to float away as vapor. To be, now this is the definition of wrestle in the Bible. Probably to float away as vapor, to be dust, grapple comes to the root word meaning light particles as volatile, small dust powder. Well, what is this? That's what wrestler means? Again, uh, the, the, the word for that is evac. It means probably to float away as vapor, to be dust, grapple. Light particles as volatile, small dust powder. Gee, that's kind of a strange word, definition for wrestle. Let's look, at the, let's look at the commentary we have now underneath that. The latter use of the Hebrew word avak, A-B-A-Q, for wrestle, is a singular and uncommon application, whereas wrestle in the Hebrew from another place, in the Hebrew pathal, P-A-T-H-A-L, The other place where, where the same word English word wrestle is, okay, means in the Hebrew to twine, literally to struggle or figuratively be morally tortuous. That's more like wrestling, this is to struggle, uh, to be uh, twined uh, together, mixed together, struggle figuratively or be morally uh, torturous. That particular word is found in Genesis chapter 30, verse 8, and that is the common application of wrestle. Well, why wasn't the common application of wrestle used here in the Bible? Instead of it, it was used this other one. Let's go on with this. All of which seems to indicate that a man, because we're talking now about a man, and they're wrestling a man with him, 
All it seems, what seems to suggest that a man was not exactly a man. Because he, in, in, uh, in the Hebrew, it's, it's uh, uh, probably to float away as vapor, to be dust, grapple, like particles, as <coughs> volatile, small dust powder. I don't know any men like that, do you? Well, okay, okay, so, as compared to the common, uh, common application, which, which is actually interesting, all which seems to indicate that a man was not exactly a man, but an angelic message as messenger or the message of God's thoughts. That's what angels are, God's thoughts. They're messengers of God's thoughts. And so now, <coughs> so what's really saying here is Jacob wrestled with an angel. Okay. God's thoughts, an angelic message. Okay. Literally meaning, here in literally meaning that Jacob wrestled with his own thoughts. He wrestled with his own thoughts all night long. That's what it means. He wrestled with his own thoughts. That Jacob wrestled with his soul. Jacob wrestled, because that's the only other thoughts he had. Jacob wrestled with his soul. With his, he wrestled with his natural man, which are whose thoughts are with the natural man? Satan's thoughts. He wrestled with Satan's thoughts, his natural man. Versus with his spirit. That's internal now, with his spirit. That means his spiritual man, his godly thoughts. That's what he wrestled. That's what happens to you. Every single one of you are wrestling <coughs> in everything you do because you're associated with God and you can't help but be associated with God. You're wrestling with your internal thoughts. <coughs> you're wrestling with God's thoughts. And God's thoughts are angels. <coughs> oh, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So, I want to go back to the thing. And Jacob was left alone all the night, and there wrestled a man, a man with him. Okay, now, a man with him. Let's look and see a little bit more of, of that man. Our, our, our third footnote. Our third footnote is from Hosea chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. And this is all about this wrestling thing. And it says here, he, that's Jacob, took his brother, that's Esau, <coughs> by the heel in the womb. We learned that, okay? And, uh, and he, Jacob, took his brother Esau by the heel in the womb, that's the womb of Rebekah, and by his strength, that is by Jacob's strength, in the Hebrew, that means by his strength means in a sense of effort, that's persistent effort, but successful, by his strength. What kind of strength did Jacob have? Who was he wrestling with? He was wrestling with it himself. He was wrestling with it. He, what kind of, how, how was he, what kind, of, what kind of strength? The only strength he had, Jacob had was prayer. That's all he had was prayer. Jacob was praying while he was in conflict in his mind. Let's continue. And Jacob took his brother by the heel in the womb and by his strength, by his strength of his prayers, he had power with God. What is power with God? Power with God is understanding. You either understand, if you understand, then you have power. If you don't understand, you didn't get that particular power. <clears throat> and by what? And by his by his prayers, he had power with God. Now let's look at footnote A. Here's an illustration of that. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, we're talking now about understanding. understanding. That's what prayer is. 
and pray with you, either asking for something or telling something or whatever, what you're trying to understand. Or understand God. And when you read the Bible, what are you doing? Well, you're trying to understand what what, what do you do when you come across something? Well, gee, I'd like to know what that means. Or you know, you're, you're, you're grappling with it. You're grappling with all this information in the Bible. You're, in effect, praying to, uh, with God to, to give you some understanding. That's what I do. That's where this stuff comes from. Just as, just, I don't wake up, pop up in the morning and have all this stuff ready. It comes by a lot of, putting a lot of time and effort and thinking, going back and forth and having conflict between my soul thoughts and my natural thoughts. What could it mean? And this way it means this, and this way it means this way. And God gives understanding. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one, not Satan, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. In the Greek, that means the heart, the thoughts, your feelings, the mind, which was, was sown in the mind. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. And seed is, and this is a quote from Luke 8, 11, the seed is the word of God. This is he which receives the seed by the wayside. That means it's trampled on, it's no good, it doesn't go anyplace. No understanding. Now that was verse, Matthew 13, verse 19. We go all the way to the end of that parable in Matthew 13, verse 23, four verses later, okay? And we read this. For he that receives seed into the good ground, that's the good ground of his heart or his mind, is he that heareth the word and understands it. And understands it. You see, because what God wants is proof. Can you think it proof if there's no understanding? If there's no understanding, you can't possibly bring proof. <coughs> it doesn't happen that way. But on the good ground of your understanding, okay. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, bears fruit, and brings forth uh, it's more fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So I gave you that that as that an illustration of in, in one parable in Matthew, the, the, the first verses and the, the last verses uh, of verses says and he explains it, understands it not, and then the one who receives it understands it in the good ground of his heart. Okay, so I'll do this again then. He did, uh, took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength, by his prayers, he had power, understanding with God. Yea, he had power, understanding, over the angel. Over the angel in the Hebrew, angel means messenger. That is the message of God, the message that comes from God. That's how you get. That's how you get. He, he comes and presents himself, and you don't understand. He, then you have to. How will I say, pray and look at all the angles and talk to God and God talks to you and you get understanding. But you have to seek understanding. You can't just read it and it doesn't come to you. Just leave it go on to the next because there's no understanding. Yeah, but the Bible's just symbols. <coughs> all these words here are just really symbols. Literally they're symbols. Symbols of what? Symbols of God's thought. God can't present to us his original thought, blow us away. So it puts it in a term, it's like a parable that we can understand. It's like a, 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 a something that's it's seed, and out of the seed comes the fruit. The fruit is the understanding. He, he that's the Jacob, had power over the angel and prevailed and prevailed. Oh, J, Jacob prevailed over this, this angel. He was, it was, he was uh, praying uh, uh, to with and trying to work out uh, the understanding. Prevail means, in the Hebrew means, overcame. Oh, that's kind of a big deal. We're all supposed to be overcome, overcomers. That's the one who gets all the fruits in the book of Revelation. Overcomers. Overcomers are overcomers. Why are they overcomers? Because they understand. If they don't understand, so it's just, and Jacob and, and, and prevailed 
overcame, and what did he overcome? He overcame his soulful understanding, his natural man understanding he overcame. He wept and made supplication unto him, unto the angel. Supplication, there was a footnote B, I go down to B, it says supplicate in the dictionary, <coughs> to kneel down, pray, P-R-A-Y, P-R-A-Y. <coughs> Get the stuff from. You're reading it now. You're to, to, to abandon it upon your own comprehension. Like, this is a pretty complicated deal. It just doesn't come just like this. I spent uh, like a week doing these messages. I mean, this goes, and why do I do that? Because every time I do it for a couple, three, four hours at a time, every time, and I leave it and I go back to it uh, another day or another time, whatever, and it, I, I get more information. More revelations. I see it a little differently every because we change. You see, so I do a little bit, and then I go and I get something else. I do whatever, and I come back to it the next time. And I look at what I did, and I get well. I should have said this. And I get other additions, and then I go back and I come again, and I get more additions. That's where this comes from. You can do this. You can come closer to God. I'm coming closer to God. That's the truth. Because understanding, it's understanding. You can do this. You just got to do it. You can't think about it and I'll get to it sometime. You just got to do it. Simply as that. Supplicate now, what it says, it says here, he wept and made supplication. Supplication, supplicate means in the dictionary to kneel down, to pray, to fold, to double up. Double up means like double up, like kneel down. It means to ask, to ask for humbly and earnestly, as by prayer, to make a humble request of petition. Earnestly, petition means over and over and over. Earnestly. And so we go up again. Yea, he had, that Jacob had power over the angel and prevailed. And he wept and made supplication unto him. He found him, Jacob found him, and this is where Jacob actually got it. the beginning of his salvation. It was a reference to Genesis chapter 28, verse 12, Jacob's ladder. Okay. That's what J Jacob. But that was just a reference point. And Jacob found him in Bethel. Bethel means in Hebrew, in the house of God. And there he spake with us. Notice that he didn't spake with God. This is God talking. He spake with us. Well, who's us? It's the triune Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He spake with the triune Godhead. All of them. So. <coughs> it just goes rapidly now. And Jacob, again, Jacob was a hill catcher, supplanter, schemer, trickster, swindler, was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. What does that mean, until the breaking of the day? There wrestled all night until the breaking of the day. The breaking of the day is sunrise, right? What happens at sunrise? Well, Jesus comes. <laughs> He's the sun. Jesus comes, sunrise. Every sunrise is Jesus coming. Okay. Well, what do you mean Jesus comes? Figuratively, what he's saying here is uh, 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 they wrestled until the breaking of the day. That is, until sunrise, spiritually, until the return of Jesus Christ. Until the return of Jesus Christ. That's telling that you should do that too. You should pray until the return. Because you won't pray after more after the return of Jesus Christ, because you'll be with Jesus then. It's a different, a whole different concept then. But you should be praying as much as you possibly can. That's the fourth footnote, going to the fourth footnote. It says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. If you want to come closer to God, pray. Pray. If you want to come as close as you possibly can to God, pray without ceasing. 
something like this. In fact, that's what in type and shadow Jacob was doing with this angel. So we sat there, uh, uh, touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. Okay, now. And when he, that's the man, the angel saw that he prevailed not against him, against Jacob. The angel saw he wasn't winning against Jacob. It's because Jacob was over following him. And what the angel did is he touched the hollow of, he touched the hollow of his, that's Jacob's thigh. The hollow means the power of the angel's side, because that defies your biggest muscle in your body, okay? So that's where your biggest muscle is. Concentrated power is in your thigh. And he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, that is the strongest muscle, figuratively the soul of the body. Figuratively the soul of the body. And the hollow, that's the power of the soul of Jacob's thigh, was out of joint. That means that he was dislocated. And all of a sudden, Jacob's thigh was dislocated. What does that mean, dislocated? Let's put no. Physically, it can be uh, to put out of place, specifically to displace a bone from its proper position at a joint. Second definition is to upset the order of, <coughs> to upset the what? To upset the main <coughs> order of, that is, be not conformed form to this world. That's Romans 12, 2. We're being supposed to, the world wants us to be conformed to them. That's the order of the world. But what is happening here? That was Jacob's order. It was being conformed to the world. And when the angel touched his thigh, he changed all that. He put the thigh out of joint, out of order of the world. So he was no longer in order with the world. <clears throat> this arranged disruption. Go back and see again. There's much here. Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he, did, and he, that's the angel of the message, said, let me go. That means release me. That's what the angel said to Jacob. For the day breaketh, and breaketh means the Hebrew ascends. That's the return of, that's another prophecy, the return of Jesus Christ cometh in, in prophecy with judgment. Anyway, and he, that's Jacob, said, I will not let you go. That's prayer. That's petition. You petition, you petition, you petition, you petition. I will not let you go. I will not, I will not let you go. And what Jacob was saying is, I want the meaning of the message. I want the meaning of the message. I will not let the, that's the meaning of the message, go. That means leave me. I want to understand. I want to understand. Except, Jacob says, except thou bless me. Bless me with what? Bless me with understanding. And he, the angel, said unto Jacob, What is thy name? This is kind of neat. Six footnote on this. <coughs> what is thy name? Six footnote commentary. Names are intended to be descriptions or, re or reflections of personal character and often become, to some degree, self fulfilling prophecies most emphatically so in the Bible. The names of the Bible, man, that's like descriptions of people and things. Okay. So names are important. What, do, what happens with a name? If, if you're all walking along in a group, right, and I say, uh, Richard, what happens is, I got two guys named Richard who are going to stop us. And stop, and stop a minute, pay attention. What did I just do? Exercise power over time. I exercise power over time. If I say, you walk out of the group and I say, George, and George stops, just like that. Or turns his head. I just exercise power over time. I made him do something he was not intending to do. Ooh. Names are really important then. Yeah. That's what your parents, or some of your parents use that when they name you specifically for a variety of reasons. Okay? You should look sometimes in the Greek and see what your name means in the Greek or the Hebrew. Names are intended to be descriptions or reflections of personal character. 
can often become to some degree self-fulfilling prophecies. Often become self if you've got a name. Well, I'm not going to give an example. But you'll go back now. Now, what, what did what Jacob do? Okay, so what Jacob said here is this. Okay, and, and uh, Jacob said to the angel, and I will not let thee go. He kept out blessing him. And he, the angel, said unto him, What is thy name? Well, we know what Jacob's name was. His name was heel catcher, supplanter, schemer, trickster, and swindler. Not a nice name. And he said, Jacob, and that's what he said. In the Hebrew, he killed catcher, supplanter, schemer, trickster, uh, trickster, swindler. And the angel said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. No more. Heel catcher, supplanter, schemer, trickster, swindler. But Israel. Oh, he got a name change. What does Israel mean? It means in the Greek or in the Hebrew, he will rule as God. He will rule as God to prevail, have power. So, what happened is Jacob became Israel. What did, what did Esau become? Dead. Jacob became Israel and lives on and still does, lives on forever and ever. Power with God. And Esau is dead. That's your natural man. said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, as a prince, hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. That means overcome. He has overcome. What did he overcome? He overcame himself. He overcame his natural man. He overcame all those sinful thoughts and uh, things that we think and do is natural man. He overbecame his satanic thoughts. Those are all satanic thoughts. So now we turn the page and go back to this old last section. Genesis, now this is again, I'll, I'll, I'll read that to you. Uh, from the Bible first, directly in the next part to interpretation. Now I'm going to read this from the Bible first, then right through the interpretation. This is Genesis chapter 32, verses 29 through 32. Three verses. Okay? 29, 30, 31, 32. Four verses. I don't know. Okay. Four verses. This is what the Bible says. And Jacob asked him and said, This is continuing now. And Jacob, this is after he got new name Israel. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. <coughs> Jacob said to the angel, Tell me thy name. And Jacob wanted to know his name. And the angel said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? Why do you ask after my name? You see, the angel knew that's power over the angel. And he didn't tell him, ever. Wherefore is it thou ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penuel, for I have seen the face, God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew of the shrink. That's what the Bible says is the verse. Now let's look at, very briefly, the interpretation. Genesis chapter 32, 29 through 32. And Jacob asked him, that's the angel, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he, the angel, said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And here I have the commentary, and gain power over me, that is, gain my attention. So 
I make sure. And he, the angel of the Lord, that's the angel of the Lord now, uh, blessed him there, blessed uh, J Jacob there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penuel, that means in Hebrew, the face of God. For I've seen God's face to face, and my life was preserved. And as he passed over, and it means in Hebrew, crossed over, he got saved. The Bible says, and as he passed over, Penuel, as he passed over, see, as, not when he passed over, but as. In other words, a process. It's a process. Your salvation is a process. Okay. As he passed over, he got saved. Uh, saved. Uh, uh, as he passed over Penuel, the sun was rose upon him. Well, who is the sun? Well, his name is Jesus Christ. Rose upon him. He got saved. He got more and more of, of, of God. More understanding of God. And the sun rose upon him. And, he, and what happened? And, and he halted upon his thigh. <coughs> halted in Hebrew means he limped as if one sided upon his thigh. That the angel had touched, okay? What, is it, what does that really mean? It means that he halted upon the thigh of his greatly weakened soulical power. He walked, he halted upon the thigh of his greatly weakened soulical power. That's his Jacob power. Whereas the thigh of his spiritual power, that's his Israel power, because he's got two legs and two thighs. His Israel power was greatly strengthened. So here's how Jacob thought. The first Jacob thought like on both of them was a natural man. And now he got a new name, Israel, and his natural man was touched by the angel, weakened by the angel. And he halted upon his side. But to compensate, his other thigh was greatly strengthened because now his other thigh was Israel. So Jacob became two. He became Jacob and Israel. Two legs, two thighs of power. Therefore the children of Israel take, eat not, that is, they take not into themselves the failure, that's the evil, the evil of the sinew. Uh, that means in Hebrew, a throng is compressing, holding back, restraining, restraining a spiritual man, which shrank. Oh, that shrank, what do you mean shrank? What shrank means in Hebrew? It means in a sense of failure, it crippled, which is upon the hull of the thigh unto this day. Because he, that's the angel of the Lord, Amplified Bible, he touch with understanding the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank in the soul in the natural man that is the soul of a natural man failed that's how I am in fact I have a strange thing to tell you <coughs> my right thigh is actually <laughs> I've seen a doctor about it because it's, <laughs> it's, it's having problems that's just a coincidence but and it wasn't the, but the point is this, that's how you are if you're now saved and born again. You used to have the strength of a natural man, but the angel decreased that when you got saved. Okay? He, he, he made it a fatal thing, and now what you're doing. But he increased the power of your spiritual man. <coughs> so you're, the natural man is dying, actually, literally dying. <coughs> and your spiritual man is coming more and more to life. And that's... Now you see, the title of today's message was, Our soul and our spirit wrestle for supremacy within us. Two minds struggling one against the other. And that's what you have. But now, all you today who are saved and born again, are actually walking like this. Your natural man has been weakened considerably all the time. And your spiritual man is being strengthened. That's the message. How do you get to be that point? Well, let the angel touch you as he touched Jacob, touch you, will weaken you. 
it will actually put to death your natural man. But it won't be gone. He'll just die slowly. But he will continue to die and die and die. Your natural man, your wants, your desires, all those things that are against God are going to diminish less and less and less. And all the things that are for God and of God are going to increase much and much and much. Because you're going to be coming more originally like Esau, but now you are Israel. Jacob became Israel. And Esau Israel lives forever. Your natural man is dying, he's dead, and just don't know it yet. And you're Israel. Sure saved me one again, Israel. How does what become saved and what again? It's a prayer that the Lord has. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt go from the me, Jacob, and what kind of thing was a guy with Jacob? Natural man, all those things with to become Israel. Just like that. Is there anybody here today who has not ever made that confession and is not saved and born again? I'd like to be saved and born again today. Please raise your hand. Anybody else? We're going to share that prayer for those people in the internet congregation. And wheresoever this message goes, the thing should raise their hand and say this prayer that they too can become Israel and live forever. And not die with the world. Say it with me, please do. If not, then I will say it. Well, let's all say it together. Okay. Would you all stand, please? <coughs> no, just, no, 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 no. Just us. Just us. Let's just say this song. Father God. Father God. Father God. I confess I'm a sinner. I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died on the cross and, Christ and, paid the penalty and paid the penalty for all my sins, for all my sins and, was resurrected. and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God. Father God. Please send your son. Please send your son. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Into my heart. Into my heart. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Forever. Forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be sure. That's the end. <laughs> Good. Thank you.